On today's Work Trends podcast, we have Lori Rudiman talking about the importance of not only reading, but connecting. Welcome to the Work Trends podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan M. Bureau. Every week, I interview interesting people and brands who are reimagining work. For more information, be sure to check us out at talentculture.com and join us live on Twitter every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern using the hashtag WorkTrends. Today's guest is Lori Rudiman. If you've been around the HR world for a while, you know Lori. She's a former HR leader turned writer, speaker, and entrepreneur. She's known for her common sense style and a straightforward approach to the issues in the workforce. She's here today to talk about how she's getting leaders to read more with her new project, HR Book Club. She's curating the best books for HR pros and bringing people together to talk about what they learned. So, Lori, welcome. Hi, Megan. It's great to be here. So happy to have you. So why HR books? Tell us more about what's going on with all this. Well, thanks for asking. First and foremost, I am committed to professional development. And I think the responsible thing to say would be something super formal like, oh, HR professionals are leaders and they need to read more and stay informed and learn and grow. But, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, Honestly, this book club is selfish totally (laughs) selfish. I had a busy 2017. I closed a tech company that I started. I almost took a job in HR technology in San Francisco. Wow. Yeah. My house flooded. Yeah. And I wanted a mental break. Have you ever found yourself like in that point in your life? I just needed a break. Completely. Lori, um, So glad you're here sharing this because I think a lot of people are in the same boat right now. Like there's just been so much transformation and we'll call it disruption, which I know you're very comfortable in because you've been in this space for for quite a while like I have. Um, So that makes perfect sense to me, actually, that you're there. And I thought to myself, I wonder who else is out there reading and what are they reading? And, you know, then it hit me through technology. I could pull my audience and I could actually curate a reading list and make recommendations. And so that's how the evolution of HR books came about. Wow. Well, what about people who say, I don't have time to read? Because I know I run into those people all the time. And it's like, how can people overcome this challenge? Because I think it's so ironic. At, At one point, we're saying, okay, we want to read more, but we are so drowning in content right now. So talk to us about this. Yeah, that's a really good observation. You know, on the one hand, I get it. Nobody has time to do anything. And you know my friend Steve Bowes. He once said that a book is a leap of faith. You read it in a vacuum. It kind of takes a lot of work to read a book. And you never know if it's worth it until the end. And Megan, some people can't read. I mean, literally can't read. They don't take in information that way. They have learning disorders or styles that get in the way of reading. And so I'm really, I'm sympathetic to that. But On the other hand, people are lazy. I'm lazy by nature. And our brains are really tired from too much time on our phones. And honestly, I think when people say, I don't have time to read, they're just making a different choice with their time. I have a hard time believing you as lazy, by the way. Oh, my God. You are probably one of the hardest working people I know, by the way. So. Didn't mean to step on that compliment. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You're very welcome. So um, where where do we find this info? Like talk to us because I know you're online in a lot of different locations. So where are you where are you living and breathing and writing and sharing right now? Yeah, so I'm still on my website at laurierudeman.com, and I write for associations and businesses just privately. I do quite a bit of ghostwriting to earn a little bit of cash, and, you know, I'm always on the requisite HR blog that's out there, but first and foremost, I'm just mostly being narcissistic like everybody else <laughs> and putting my own thoughts and ideas out there on a regular basis. But, you know, um, I do a lot of that. Like, I'm I'm addicted to my phone, like everybody else in this world. I suffer right. from a high degree of tech addiction. And I thought to myself, I need to make better choices in 2018. I mean, really, I was starting yeah. to feel the drain of always being on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. 
And we I, I, hear okay. you. So yeah. please know something. The talent culture community and audience has been living this for eight years. So please know that I think a lot of people might be feeling this, but may yeah. not be talking about it. Yeah. So that's why it's so refreshing to have you here right now. Um, how how do you make time to read? Well, that's a good question. I, first and foremost, uh, we started by canceling our cable. So okay. right there, I'm watching less TV. And, you know, I mean, we have Netflix and we have Hulu and we have all that other stuff. And we are in the golden age of TV. But I started making different choices about how I spent my time. The other thing I'm doing is I'm putting my phone away in the evening. Well, I'm yeah. trying to, you know, so I'm mo removing technology. But I'm just really trying to be aware and mindful of how I'm spending my time. And when I am standing in line at Starbucks now or I'm at the grocery store or what, whatever, I have my Kindle app on my phone. And between my Kindle app and my Kindle device, it syncs. And so I'm always at the place I left off. So rather than going on Facebook and looking at look people who are looking at me, yeah. <laughs> I'm like trying to read. You know, that's those are yeah. the different choices that I'm making. So I'm budgeting my time differently. And really, it's a mindful choice. And I have to catch myself in the act when I'm on Instagram looking at stories like, do I really need to be looking at these cat stories? And sometimes I do. Like, I love looking at animal videos yes, and baby videos, right? And I have a niece and a nephew that are young, yep. and so I love seeing them. But um, I also like getting smarter and challenging my perception in the world. So I'm trying to do things differently in 2018 and budget my time differently. And how many of you out there in our audience and work trends are, are going through the same thing? We want to hear from you on Twitter utilizing the hashtag work trends, because I think a lot of people out there are in the same place. I know I am. I am trying to be mindful, like you, Lori, in the evenings of just turning off taking a yoga class, looking within. Um, so we're real curious to hear uh, more stories from you out there in the audience as well. So what's the HR Book Club reading in March? Tell us more. Sure. You know, we make suggestions. We're not bossy. We allow our readers to choose whatever they want to read. And it is Women's History Month in the month of March. But Megan, I hate reading history books. They put me to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's just not my jam, right? Like, I'm not into yeah. it. So yeah. um, we make a couple of recommendations each month, and we say read one, read both, read whatever you want. We don't really care. And so our first recommendation is The New Rules of Work by the founders of The Muse. So Alex and Catherine wrote a book, and it's all about how to look for a job and find contentment in our talent-driven economy. Have you read it yet? I have not, oh, but it is good. now on my list. That sounds amazing. Well, you can't change the world if you're in a crappy job. Yeah. So I really feel like women, men, everybody out there, people who are suffering with their employee experience uh, need a guide, need a muse, so to speak, to get them to the next mm -hmm. level within their career. And Alex and Catherine have really written an exceptional and timely book. So that's recommendation number one. And if uh, you have a chance, Megan, we'd love for you to read it and just share your thoughts. Absolutely. And I will probably use a hashtag with my thoughts. How's that? Yeah. Please. Uh, we use Surprise. HR Book Club. We use HR Book Club. So okay. we love that. Okay. The second book we're reading this month is something that is a bit of a div uh, diversion from an HR book, but I'll get back to that in a second. It's called Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved. And it's by Kate Bowler. Have you heard of that book? I love that concept. All right. Well, she's a divinity professor at Duke, which is where I'm located here in North Carolina, and she has stage four cancer, and she's writing about facing death. And so this is a pretty heady topic, but okay. I feel like HR professionals are always in the epicenter of bad news, and I thought it would be interesting to learn about what it feels like to be an employee with a qualifying life event. So that's why I made that recommendation. So it's a little non-traditional, but I think that counts as an HR book. It so totally Kate, counts as an HR book. It's about Kate life. Bowler. It's about yeah. culture. It's about people. I love that. And I'm going to dive into that one as well. 
Yeah, I, we're, I'm really, um, I hate to say I'm really enjoying a book about a woman with cancer, but yeah. it's really pragmatic. Um, she's a strong female, again, with the theme of Women's History Month, and just has a great message around what to say and what not to say when someone is suffering from a terminal illness. So super resourceful, super important for the audience to uh, have a look at, and it's also a quick read. That's the other thing, Megan. In order to be a reader, you have to develop the skill, and you can't just jump into war and peace. You got to start small. So find a book that's like 100 pages, 150 pages, read 10 pages a night. That's how we're encouraging our book club to read at least 12 books a year. Oh, that's and that's reasonable. Totally, totally reasonable. I mean, Anybody can not, do this. I, I know other book clubs who are way unreasonable, I think, for busy people like myself and you and, and the rest of us here. But one a month, that's yeah. doable. And you really get to focus chapter by chapter and week by week, I would imagine. And and where and where is all of this um, thought process and sharing going on for you all? Well, we have right a website. On the site? Yeah, okay. on HR Books. And then we also have a Facebook page, Best HR Books, and a Twitter account, Best HR Books. And so we're sharing, we're on Instagram, and it's really just about community. I'm not looking to uh, sell books, although I do have Amazon affiliate links and I'm very transparent about it. I'm just looking to encourage more thought leadership. And I truly believe that the people closest to a problem are the ones equipped to solve it. And so if we can get HR professionals uh, seeing different points of view and learning about vocation and passion and meaning a little bit differently, when a problem arises at work that they've never seen before, hopefully they can hearken back to a story that they've read or a book that they've consumed and be informed and at least make an educated guess. And you're not talking about online books, you're well, talking not, about actually a real book? Yeah, I mean, not yet. I, you know, <laughs> Do you understand funny. where I'm going with this? I do, I, mean, I do. Some yeah. people prefer to read books like e-books or they prefer audio books. Honestly, I, I really don't care. As long as yeah. you're getting content that's not narcissistic in a new way, like I, I really don't care what you read. But yeah. what I care about is that you're reading something different and you have um, a, a bit of a almost like you know, it'd be great if you had a little bit of a challenge reading a book. God forbid we read something know. that tests our own perspective and our own POV and it doesn't freak us out. And I think the more we read different kinds of content and hear different voices, we get used to alternative opinions and then we can really go forward and implement true diversity and true inclusion within our organizations. What can we learn from this, the women writers, about how to make work better specifically? Yeah, you know, I think gender is a construct, and so I'm always really like a human construct, and I'm always really careful around talking about gender and sex, and, and so the fact that I'm calling a bunch of women women writers, I really don't know how they identify themselves. Women, female, he, she, I have no idea. But I think yeah. in general, last month was African American History Month, and we read books from African American authors, but the stories throughout all of these months are universal. Great books, I believe, speak to the individual reader while telling truths that are universally understood. So whether it's women, men, uh, people with pink hair, people with cancer, veterans, yeah. I, I don't care. I want to learn more about identity and how people tell their stories. So a great story well told wins the day in the HR book club. Well, and you're also creating community. Which I oh. think is something, believe it or not, um, that is desperately needed right now. I think you brought this up earlier in this conversation. There's a lot of me, me, me's going on right now. Um, you know, check out my my Snapchat. Check out my video. This is where I'm promoting. This is where I'm speaking. Frankly, there's a lot of that going on, and there has been for years in social. So for me to listen to this right now, Lori, the fact that you're building community, that you're bringing people together around a topic that's important, perhaps, and somebody has a unique POV and they want to share that on, that's awesome. Like, Thank I think, you. I yeah, I think that. That it's good stuff. And I think, you know, we need this um, more so than uh, now than ever, right? Because there's so much weirdness going on in the world uh, with politics and culture and you yeah. name it, you know? Really? But, you know, 
There are um, two things that I think of, and thank you for that compliment. Um, first of all, my dear friend and mentor, William Tincup, told me this book club is a really great idea, Lori, but if it's all you, it's going to fail. Yeah. And he's right. I mean, if this is just about Lori Rudiman reading books, nobody cares. And I am, I don't blame him. Like, I barely care, you know? Yeah. But if this is about a bunch of people coming together around a shared cause of improving themselves, and we all do the collective work of self-improvement, we're all going to be better and have a great experience together. So, William was right on the money. And, you know, yeah. in January, we read this book by Brene Brown, Braving the Wilderness, and she said it's hard to hate people up close. And one of the things I would like to do, even though we're using technology is to really find a way to bring people closer together. Like, I don't yeah. care who you voted for a year and a half ago. I care that you're a decent human being with values. And so for me, right. the HR book club is a way to connect with people and forget about the politics of the day, forget about policy and start to think about how do we make the world a better place going forward? Because I really believe HR professionals sit at the intersection of work, power, politics and money. And if we're not mm -hmm. aware of it, if we're not um, understanding what's happening within our domain, we're going to blow it. And we have blown it. I mean, the Me Too movement yeah. is an example of how we've blown it. So. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's let's talk. Let's unpack that. I mean, you've written about equal pay and your frustration that all talk about equal pay is just talk with no action. So what's your message to people about equal pay today? Oh, it's super complicated. Uh, pay people fairly. That's it. Like, it's not that hard. We yeah. make a lot of excuses, but budgets are choices. And if you're not paying people fairly and you can't figure it out, it's you. That's what's going on. But also, I mean, I really, I have a more philosophical approach to this. I think we need to kill salary negotiations. Now, Megan, jobs can pay within ranges, and I'm okay with merit and discretion to some extent. But you can't take a marginalized population, especially with our country's history of sexism and racism and homophobia, and expect these individuals to suddenly feel empowered enough to advocate on their own behalf. Like, that's never going to happen. That's not the way this world works. And if you're the kind of HR professional or company that thinks it's okay to pay people based on shadowy math and circumstances with no explanation or accountability to anybody other than yourself, yeah, you deserve to go out of business. So pay people fairly. Yeah, and people are talking about it. We're sharing stories. Um, it, it's no longer invisible. Um, and I think that that's the message, right? I mean, it is. it's all about context and everybody but, has their own story. Well, you know, I am not satisfied with employers saying, well, people can go on salary.com or Glassdoor or Fairy God Boss and talk about <laughs> the company and the culture and what the position pays. Like you ought to be committed to transparency because if you're not, you're a dinosaur in this yeah. uh, economy. So if you are not out there talking about what you value sharing how you pay people. You don't have to get down to the granular level of everybody's paycheck, but you can certainly invoke more uh, transparency in your communication. If you're not doing that, you're out of date and you're out of business in 10 years. Zero question about it. I'm totally on board with that. And look, we all know the work is changing. Work is changing fast. What are your predictions for how HR will change in the next few years? Yeah, I'm not an optimist. I'm yeah. sure you, you know that about me. Um. I do. I do. And that's okay. Okay. All right. So knowing that this is an HR audience and they are my friends and they are my colleagues and I have a tremendous amount of love and respect, I worry that the future of work has nothing to do with human resources. And we have two things that will happen. The first thing is that we're going to have a permanent class of educated workers who think for a living and create, but don't really work. And they will earn a majority of the money that's out there for wages. And then we'll have a second permanent underclass of people who work hard and really work for low wages and serve that upper echelon. So what I'm talking about is a bifurcation, a split, a class system. That's where I see this going. And I think technology is really driving this split and it's breaking my heart. And so personally, for me, I'm a fan of wealth redistribution and basic income. And uh, I think in April or May, one of the books we're going to read at the HR Book Club is on basic income and what that is. Because I think it's important for HR professionals to understand that giving everybody 
uh, access to health care, giving them access to education, giving them a little bit of money is not welfare. We have all built the success in our economy. We are all responsible for Microsoft, for Facebook, yep. for all of the wealth, and it's about time we all benefit from it. So love it. Stay tuned. I will stay tuned, and I want to thank you for stopping by here, Lori. We always like having you, and uh, here at Work Trends, we will be checking out the HR Book Club for sure, u- utilizing that hashtag. Um, thanks again, and we'll, we look forward to unfolding this on Twitter. Thanks, Megan. And, you know, we'll come back in the coming months anytime you want us to talk about this. And, Megan, as you start to think about um, books that you love and your audience loves, if anybody has a recommendation, head on over to hrbooks.com, pop me an email, and make a book recommendation. I love hearing what people are reading. So that's really important to me. You got it. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for listening to Work Trends from Talent Culture. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And I'd be really grateful if you took a moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes. It helps other people find our show. If you know someone who would enjoy listening, please share it with them. You can learn more about the future of work at talentculture.com. Work Trends.